trap again. What are you thinking? I don't know, Mandy. I mean, for 80 miles, I've seen this crap straight away. And I can't understand why they're, no, they're not fishing it. I don't understand why there's not a market. Looks like they tried to do something about it in the 90s. Maybe it just wasn't enough of them at the time. Yeah, I don't know. One king, three trolls! Not seen a lot of red crab. Seen a lot of troll crab. You know, it's just I have a feeling in my gut. Smaller your gut. Okay, guys, come on in real quick, would you? Uh, come again. Come on in. I want to turn this bear around. Head back to town. In 1958, when my father started fishing crab in Alaska, there was no formal fishery, but there was crab. There was so much crab, they were crawling on the beaches. He and a few other men managed to turn that resource into a billion-dollar industry. There's a resource here, too. All right, so here's the deal. Like it or not, we're going to head back in. If there's another species out there that we can build a market on, why wouldn't we? What are you trying to say? I want to get to the beach. I want to do my own due diligence. I want to go find out what's going on. You're just going by yourself? You can handle this. You can fish king crab. The boat, you're going to keep the wheel spinning, right? That's OK. Yeah. I mean, right now, we're participating in a fishery. But I mean, if there's something there, we could be building a fishery. If it doesn't pan out, I can jump on the next trip. That's not a problem. You got to be in this 100%, right? I'm glad you see it my way. Or is it our way? No, it's always my way. No, it's always our way. <laughs> now it's our way. I like that he's dreaming. I do like that. But I don't like that he's leaving. I agree with it 100% on a business level, but personally, I just feel more comfortable having him here. You ready to throw him? Love you, Love you too, brother. Be careful. Nah, now I got to act like an adult. I've looked up to Sig as a mentor, a captain, a father since I was 25. But that's not the only reason why I'm here. Mandy offered me 10% stake in the business, and I'll take whatever troll I can get. But I'm telling you right now, I'm here to hunt reds. Old bear, Jake. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Feels like the first time running a boat again. Just piling in a 193-foot boat in Norway, no problem. Holy <laughs> Here we go. Whenever there's a new fishery, there's always a learning curve. With any mainstream market, before the, you know, the masses knew about it, the fishermen have already had their hands on it, right? They're going to be the people that tell me the truth. They will be the people that tell me firsthand what they see and when they see it. So here's what I know. In Norway, the fishermen that catch these crab throw them back to the ocean. There is no market for these crab. There's got to be a reason why. So, I mean, I figured I'd just go to the source. This is where they process crab and fish. Halibut. Cod. Well, I think we're getting close. Well, I'm on my way to meet uh, Glen Tony Peterson. He is my third cousin. His father, Tennis, was one of my father's very best friends. He's been around Norway for a long time, and he knows a lot of people. Glen Tony, we've known each other all our lives. Uh, raised a lot of hell together as kids. We fished in Alaska together uh, for a while. And then he moved back to Norway. 
and we lost touch. But he's been in the industry here ever since. It's been a while. I know. Well, you picked a nice spot. That's all I know. Yeah, this is a good place. <laughs> Life's been turning around a little bit? Oh, yes, it has. I had to. I had to. I was killing myself with alcohol, and uh, I had to find a new lifestyle. You were always a bad influence for me. You know that, right? Well, I don't know who was the influencer. <laughs> if it was me or you or both of us, I don't know. We were the first guys in line when they opened up the liquor yes. store, the first one here. That's true. We yeah. couldn't have been more than 17? Something like that. I remember because my grandfather, he said, yeah. have you seen the newspaper? <laughs> And I go, what do you mean? And he puts it on the table, and it's me and you right in the front of the line at the opening of the liquor store. Yeah, where's our booze? <laughs> he goes, don't worry, yeah. I'm not going to tell uh, your mother. And then he just laughed and laughed and laughed. Well, my mother didn't laugh. <laughs> well, I've got a lot on my mind lately, so. I, I'm glad you could take the time. Well, I've heard some stories about you trying to get something together here about Yeah, that. it's all about troll crap. Like, what do you know about it? Because yeah. I'm just learning as we go. I mean, uh, most people haven't even seen one, and they don't know what it is. Maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. But I do know I like what I saw. I like the way they taste, and I just feel like there's something there. you got to find the right people that got a heart for this and, and really wants to market this. C can you produce a lot of crab? I always think we can do it because I'm seeing them. Well, I can contact a few people. That'll point me in the right direction anyway. Just pulling up to the stall boss now. So uh, this will be my first time up in the wheelhouse. You know, it's a big boat. It's going to be something different for me. I'm just going to try to, you know, do my part while Jake's off the boat, try to put some crab on here. Growing up in Vancouver, it's close to the Columbia River. I grew up on the water my whole life. Uh, and ever since I was, you know, 10 or 12 years old, I pretty much knew I wanted to run a boat for a profession. And when it comes to fishing, you never know when you're going to get your shot. Because people get a job in the captain's seat, they're there their whole lives. You have to jump at any opportunity to be able to get up in the wheelhouse. Hey, guys, how's it going? We're going to go fishing, I guess, huh? That's right. Yep. Hey, hey, Clark! Yep. Come on up! I'm super excited to have Clark here. Clark knows boats. He knows how to run boats. This is going to be fun. I don't know, you know, about this, you know. He knows the deck, you know, but uh, he doesn't know the wheelhouse. That's a different story. You ready to go? Yeah. This is a little more than what we have on our boat. The hardest thing with the boat that you'll run into is just maneuvering in between pods. OK. You set them too far, you're going to be going too fast. She doesn't slow down. And then if you set them too tight, you, then you got to turn. She doesn't turn. Find that happy sweet spot. Yeah. All right. When I got here, I started always playing around. You know, I'd ramp it up, kick it over, and turn. And then I use the bow thrusters when I haul. OK. Just do your best not to run over anything. All right. You're going to be fine. We'll see. Yeah, right. So Clark's got a license. He's about the same age I was when I took over the saga. But you can't know what somebody's capable of when it comes to catching crab until they actually do it. I'll be back. You got my number yeah. if you want me to pick up any parts or anything. Oh, no. Well, you know, Jake, I just started to like you. <laughs> well, no, we got a green on up in the uh, helmet, you know, so. Roger. We're coming up on the gear here. Still kind of figuring out how to maneuver this thing, so I'm going to see how this first haul goes. Try to get close enough for Lawrence here to make a throw. She doesn't move. This thing steers like a slug. Lawrence, get that hook ready. Bomb that. That was my bad. I'm going to back down on it. OK, Clark, we got to go closer. You're too far away. Yeah, I hear you. You got smoke? That's smoke. 
Tobias, go down there. There's smoke. Smoke, smoke. Let's see all the smoke over there. Get down there. Shutting it down. Thruster. Thruster's off. Can I get a report from the deck? To be us. Yeah, I'll call you back. You know, I know what's going on. Find out. We just had a fire down there. We got it all fixed. It's just one thing after the other here. This boat just does not want to agree with crabbing right now. It's it's not working. Uh, the copy looks pretty bad. Get to go up. Get to go. Hello, Clark, you got me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, it uh, looks like the coupling on, uh, on the thruster is pretty fried. I don't think we should use it, so uh, I think we just lost our thruster. Copy that. Man, you know. Everything's going to go real slow now. I got to come up on these bags manually. We got no thruster, so. Yeah, I copy that. Good throw, Lawrence! You know, with the Northwestern, you can spin on a dime on that thing. This, it just, you slowly come in, you slowly come back. It's not made to be pulling up on bags. Coming up. First pot up. Ah, empty. Blank. Uh, it was a bummer, you know, the first pot, you know. So hopefully it's, it's getting better. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get that. I need to come around hard on this bag. This thing just won't turn. Roger. Second pot coming up. Zero. Zero, nothing. First two pots we hauled came up empty. You know, for now, we need to keep producing crap. Just trying to keep the wheels spinning. Right alongside. That's what I like to see. That was good, Clark. I think I got a good handle on it. There better be something in these pots. I mean, there was some crab here before, but they're definitely not here now. It's on me now to find the crab. I'm gonna have to move. We're gonna have to find different real estate. I just don't know where to yet. You know, I thought I was gonna come pull some crab, help the partnership out, and here we go. Back to square one, basically, by stacking all the pots and moving. This is not how I wanted to run the boat the first time. I saw this going a little bit differently. Yeah, hey, it's shaking. It's y'all out there. No, it's not. No, Clark is he's not doing that good. Now we got to figure out how we can speed up this process of getting these pots on, move, go find the crab. We spent a lot of time and fuel uh, getting that line out of the wheel. So, uh, hopefully now we finally get some crap. I got a 50,000 pound order on the line. I really hope there's something in this gear. And this is our last home. Here it comes.
can't see yet. something in this pot and at least we have some hope that'll boost morale for something to come back to Coming up! Blank. in second pot dude <laughs> nothing still no sign of life damn it that was another blank, just like we're used to after a while there. I got 30 pots here. Uh, El Capitan, you know, we're gonna stack it and uh... Stack them. I don't know, it's getting nasty here, you know. I gotta get this turned. There's a big wave coming up on the port side, right? Get ready for it. You okay? Yeah. Yeehaw! <laughs> Where did that come from? Really weather now. It took a really big wave. I uh, can't really catch a break. The hits keep coming. Uh, yeah, be careful. There's some big waves out here. Okay, you need one guy. Tobias, get Tobias. There's a bilge alarm going off in the steering room at the stern. Tobias needs to go in the engine room. Yes. Tobias! Tobias! Engine room, Tobias! Oh, for real, for real! Just lost my steering. I got alarms going off, and I got no steering. I'm in 12 to 15 foot seas. There's shoals, there's land, and I, 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 got, I got nothing. We have the bilge alarm, and uh, this, this pump here, it was stuck, so uh, it didn't suck very well. We, we have a leak on the, through the shaft for the, for the, for the wheel, for the steering gear. Uh, and this is the steering gear. I just found out that I'm taking on water in my stern. Not my day. Not my kind of day. But that's fishing, I guess. This is the grease pump. It will pump uh, grease straight into the seal because it creates pressure so the water cannot come in. Okay. You fill this with grease, you turn the handle, and you're pumping it through this pipe and into the, and into the seal there. And seal off the water. Okay. Yeah, so the rudder post was leaking, but uh, it didn't need grease. But uh, th there are still some water coming in, but uh, okay. it's only a dribble now. But the, the steering unit itself is fine? It's, well, Thank you. it's under control. Okay, great. Thank you, Tobias. Right now, I think it's manageable, so I'm going to keep going. Hopefully we're starting to catch some crabs here. Okay, just have him uh, run, run the buoys through real quick. 
quick and then go ahead and turn the hydros off. Uh, having problems with the hydraulics, we got a leak. Not a insult to injury. The seal between the air. I blew off the seal inside here. You think it's coming out of the hose or it's coming out of the block? No, it's out of the block. It's out of the block. There's a seal blown in the hydraulic block down there. Tobias is just going to remove the hoses from the block, combine them together, and that way our crab block will run, but our pot launcher will be out of commission. I can use the crane. I can use several different ways to do it. too big. I'm gonna have to go in source the Be nice if they can fix it pretty quick. And I need to get to an area where I can find a home. I can't find any engine room, Here comes uh, Tobias to get a report. Check. Okay. It's pouring out pretty bad. Um, the plugs we had in the four pick wouldn't fit. I've been down in the shop, engineer shop, and uh, can't find the right ones. There was a ton of fittings in the mechanic shop, but you've went, you've went through all those? Yeah, of course I can go look again, but. Just throw it out the block, Yarla. I gotta go to town. Yeah. Back to town again, 120 miles. It's just a dust shirt. Nothing. Well, that was a big fat zero. There's still hope here. It's what's in the rest of the pots that count. I know that they were set properly, and hopefully there's crab. If there's no crab in these next ones, there's no excuse. We need to catch crab in this hole. This is our only last chance. You know, our goal was always a million dollars. We're a couple hundred thousand dollars away from that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God. All in blind. Nope. No, this isn't working. That's one side, one ground. Nope, it's not working. This is not going to work. <laughs> I just feel like we're so close to the finish line, you know? Didn't need a sprained ankle today. Didn't need the tie turning the way it's doing. Didn't need these empty pots. Hopefully Clark's onto something. First one's on the bow, Lawrence. I'm turning. This is the stuff that Jake set here, and it's much shallower. My string didn't do much at all. Hopefully, we'll get something out of this. Last chance right here. We gotta start catching something or we're not gonna make any money right here. So we kinda of struck out on six that uh, this is 
a last chance. This is Jake said. If nothing comes up in these pots, we're It's that simple. We bit off more than we could chew, but that's, that's the name of the game when you're chasing dreams. All you need is a little strip, one little pile. Come on, let's see something. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on. Baby. I can hear them chattering down there, Jake. Is there really something in there? I can hear something. Yeah! 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 Right. yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my god! Look at all of them! There we go. That's what we're talking about. All right! Well done. They're huge. That's all keepers. Hope they keep coming up like that. You know, when I look back and think about Jake's progression as a fisherman, you know, when he first got on the Northwestern, he was mid-20s, uh, just a kid. And it's amazing to see how far he's come uh, in, in such a short time. Let's go to get 50! We got life! We got him! We got big life! Big crowd! Yeah! <laughs> oh. This is more like it. We've been waiting a long time for this. As much as I hate the stress, I well think done, I like it. Well done, my boy. Yeah. Well done. Holy <laughs> But I'd like to think that, uh, you know, he did take away something from the Northwestern and maybe a little bit from my lead. I've always thought of Jake like a son. And, uh, you know, in a way, uh, that does make him a part of my legacy as well. Yeah! It's loaded! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah! Well, I'm not gonna take credit for teaching anything. Yeah, right. This was all you. Wink, wink. <laughs> I gotta call Clark, man. Okay. He's gonna be just elated. Hello? Clark! Clark! Dude, we're we're killing it, Clark! Oh my hey. god! Well, how's it going for you? This is on fire, man. It's so good. <laughs> oh my god. We pulled the first pot, like 15, got to 20. We even had a 50 in it. 50. Awesome. Awesome. With what you're getting and what we're getting, I'll tell you, we're going to get it. We're going to get that mark. Tell you what, when you're done with the day, just give us a tally. We'll connect again, OK? All right, sounds good. Thank you. Well done. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Last pot. Last pot, baby! I see something on that hook. Do not miss, please. Do not throw that hook unless you're guaranteed. I'll turn around, I'll do 500 circles. Jim Crow 2022 Norway on. Um. <laughs> yeah. Time to go in. We got what we need. All right, buddy. Take care of that ankle. OK. This experience has uh, been very life-changing. 
it'll probably take me months to even process. I don't know if I'm just chasing after a dream. I know that Dad chased after his dream, and the reality is it's come back full circle. I just hope that he's proud of me. I really do. You know, Jake, he's a great fisherman, but he's seeing fast money right now. He's not looking at the long term or the big picture. How goes it? Actually, really good. Check us out. Dude, I'm, so I'm fishing right here, and I'm starting to see some really good signs of life here. Our little restaurant experiment worked. So right now, I think we got to shift from this red crab to troll. I, I mean, I get what you're doing, but there's... I'm there's, just saying, I've I can got get the, the crab right now. But I can go get it. It's right there. And I want to start something new. That's why we're here, and we're trying to create a buzz so that we can start our own thing. Come on, the Alaska king crab fishery is closed. We have the leverage. Lenny's got buyers right now that are willing to pay top dollar in the US for king crab. I think we should stay focused on our business right here. You can get an exclusive market, and you can name your own price. Plus, you're cutting out the middleman. That was the whole point of this. Fine. So we'll just keep doing what we're doing, but just be ready to switch to troll crab when I ask you to, all right? Okay. You know, I don't get it. I mean, we're not seeing eye to eye on all this stuff here. I am the majority partner, and what I say goes. It's that simple. Hey, Jake. Hey, Lenny. How are things going? Good. Good. Um, I think go ahead and tell those buyers to count on me. I'm going to sell them that crab. Oh, OK. Are you sure six in two? Sure. Like I said, Lenny, we're in. Roger that. So just to confirm, the buyers would like to start with a sample of 5,000 pounds. Does that work for you? I think so. I'll have to see how the fishing goes, but I'll have an update soon. OK, Jay. The sooner the better. All right, bye. Bye. Just let me do what you brought me over here to do. It was to catch king crab, make us money, so we could pioneer. This takes forever to pull this thing. <laughs> I'm the 65, so uh, it, uh, it, it takes a while. Hopefully she holds together. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Be careful, guys. Coming up. King crab. King crab, baby. Look at yeah. five. Five. Five keeper. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, man, you got me? Hey, Jake, how's it going? Finally ran into king crab today. That's good, buddy. That's good for us. That's good for everything. Yeah, I'm super excited. Sig's going to be mad, though. What did you do? Well, I think I'm going to move some crab through Lenny in the US. What? We got buyers waiting. He's getting trolled tunnel vision. Well, is it a done deal? As much red crab as we can get them, they'll buy. But they just want to see what we can give to them before they start buying in huge bulk. Well, don't do anything yet. Let me talk to him, OK? He's not going to hear me out. I'm going to have to take my portion of the crab and sell it through Lenny. Let's connect back at the dock. I want to make sure that we're not missing anything. Roger. Hey, you got me? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Big pots did good, and I think we got enough to fulfill that order, so that's the main thing. So we haven't figured them out yet, but there's definitely crab out there. So did you hear about 
about Jake? No, what about Jake? He's talking about making a deal with Lenny. He shouldn't be getting buyers and going out on his own like that. That's not why I brought him here. Well, Jake just thinks that you're focusing on the troll. Feels like you're not listening. The whole point was to cut out the middleman and get a deal so we can go direct. So I don't know what the hell he's thinking. You just need to talk to Jake in person, okay? We're gonna figure this out. Sorry I raised my voice. I will talk to him myself, okay? Bye. Bye-bye. I'm happy I got all those big king crab. So he's gonna be pissed, because I did this without him. But it's good for the boat. That's gonna be a scream match, it is what it is. How are we doing? Good. So, what's the deal with Lenny and the crab? I've got it sold. You made a deal. 5,000 pounds. The vision was trying to cut the middleman out and go direct. It's double the dock price. I can air freight it from Honigsvog. I can even get more money if it goes live. Standard, 30 bucks a pound. And it's basically you and I that have to catch this crab by a certain date, correct? Just like home. Yeah, but we're not home. We don't know where the crab are. It's a big risk for us. And you're on fishing. I'm on fishing, yeah. Well, you know what you're seeing out there. So, I mean, you make the call. Uh, my plan is to keep fishing troll, OK? I'm actually shocked and appreciative that you're respecting me as a partner. Well, you are a partner. Honestly, I was ready for a fight when you came in here. I'm shaking. Yeah, I'm not here to fight. It makes sense. And uh, if you want to do that, you know, it's on you. I just want to make sure you're seeing it from both sides, OK? Building a legacy is not easy. We've persevered. We've adapted. Everyone is stepping up. Hey, Dad, you got me? Hey, I got you. So I heard back from the cannery about what the dock prices are right now. Well, what was it? It's about $10 a pound. What, the dock? That's half of what it was last time we were here. Besides fishing, I think Norway is my whole world. Um, I was raised as a Norwegian. I'm 100% Norwegian. My dad always made a big deal about making it back to Norway. If there's anything I can do to help fulfill those promises that he made to his dad, I'll do it. They are not the peak as it was when you fished in the fall. So they basically just normalized. Well, I can't do anything about that now, Mandy. You know, we just started hauling our first string. OK, good luck out there. OK, sweetie, I'm out. Well, that's not the news we needed to hear right now. I don't know if I buy half the price, but she said 10 bucks. So that's in Norwegian kroner. That is half of what we saw last time. In 1956, my father's earning dropped from $140 a month in the herring fishery to $40 a month the next year in 1957. That's why the closures in Alaska scare me. And that's why, you know, this business that we're trying to build here in Norway is just so important. We're coming up on our first bag. It's kind of hard to find them on this boat. You know, the lighting's not exactly perfect right now, so everybody's trying to get it figured out here. Why should you miss on purpose just to piss him off so no, he has to don't, do it? Don't do it. Don't miss! Yeah, right. He hurt me. All right, so we just got to keep the weather on this side. You have 
two and a half shots on this pot. It's a deep one. It's gonna be good. I'd love to see a crab an hour. I'd love to see just life. Is that full speed or what? All right, let's see what we got here. Come on, be something. I see legs. Yeah! Oh, yeah, that's big boys! Ah! <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Norwegian red king crab. Yeah! They're monsters! I hit it big time. What was in that last one? 18! All right, well, there's a couple of king in there. This spot has two and a half shots. There's a deep one. Well, this is right off an edge, and there's a drop down. In my opinion, this was a good spot. Come on, let's see something. Some weird ass fish. Nothing? Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> there he is. Look at this bait. Hey! We're not going to make any money this way. They got in that one. Is there sand, please? Sand fleas. They're eating the bait. Ew, dude! It's not just a Bering Sea problem. Oh, my God. Each pot we pull up is giving us an amount of information that we need. There's nothing wrong with all the black. First pot had some crap. Second pot had sand fleas. So it was just a couple of fish. The bait was gone. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, I don't know. There's, I saw something crawl in there. Oh, there's something. There's life. What are those things? Tobias said it's a troll crab. Bring it up to me. I want to see that thing. It looks like a rock crab and a red crab and a blue crab all together. It looks more like a blue crab than it does look like a... Red crab, yeah. It kind of looks like a golden king. That's a king crab. It's not even moving. I'll put them in the tank. Yeah. We're on some uh, smaller crab. You know, usually the big boys are not too far behind. And I'm going to just keep going and try to be positive here. I can't see the bottom, man. Sand fleas? No, no. no, there was no fleas, so anything else. <laughs> I know, I know. Can't blame it on the fleas. That's a storm from your one and only. Is that king? Troll crab. Troll crab again. We got it, Lauren. Troll crab. Troll crab. What do we got? Troll crab. Troll crab.
the same thing. Yeah. No kings, let's go. No kings. This is pitiful. Well, then we're just in the wrong spot, fellas. Well, the guys work well together. I mean, I got to give them that. But they are a little frustrated. That's pretty obvious. Nobody likes not catching crab either. Hey, guys, come on in. Take a break. Yeah, the first one we saw life. And after that, it was dead. Bang, she's gone. You know, at this pace, it would take a while to hit that million dollar mark, that's for sure. So they're pulling on a caps, which is what they did back in the day. It is very old school. My goal of hitting the million dollar mark is the same as it always has been. Just now, we have to include a different fishery. The risk is bigger, but so could be the potential upside. Everything hinges on this string right now. Let's go. Let's see some life, baby. Come on now. Come on. It's not going to cut it. First one was blank. I need to see something here. I'm already out of time. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Zero throw. Zero. This is not working. Nothing in it. There's zero in that pot, too, so I don't know what to say. Got something here. We have crab. We got crab? Got crab. <laughs> There's one. There's a sign of life. Two. That's a little better. We're gonna need more. There's four trolls. Four trolls, man. There's four in that one. And that's pretty good, you know, for these little pots. Come on, big stuff, big money. That's pretty good. I'm liking it. Big numbers. We need those 200 kilos. It's adding up. At least there's life in the pots. Hey. 15. One five. One five, 15. Awesome. Getting closer. <laughs> we need to keep this momentum. That's how you fill an order. Zero. Uh, blank right now, first part of the string. We're not catching anything, you know, it's a pretty sad story, actually. I really hope this trip wasn't for nothing. I was brought into this business to specifically target red king crab. It's, it's my bread and butter. 
it's what I do. And it's really frustrating when you can't perform. All right, here comes pot number two. So I got one female red king crab, but Lenny wants seven pound healthy males. I don't have that yet, but I'm gonna get them. Coming up! And here it comes. You knew it, Jake! Yeah! You knew it! Oh my god! <laughs> I forgot what this felt like. This is nice to see. Yeah! <laughs> That's a nice pot. I think we're gonna start to make some money now. Yeah! Those are good crab. I gotta call Lenny. I finally caught some red king crab, and they're big. 5,000 pounds, does that work for you? 5,000 pounds? I think I can do it. I just have to talk to Sig. OK, back to me when you can. Sounds like Lenny's buyers are interested. So I got to stay on this crab. We got something! Reds, are they reds? Yeah, red king. Red king, baby. If my father was here right now, he'd be in tears to see his son running a big ass boat in Norway. I'm not yet. I feel pretty special. Nice and easy. OK, I got to get to this dinner. Here we go. Well, Manny got the truck for us. That's awesome. Let's get him. Yeah, this should be the last of it. Yep. With this, we probably got just enough to fill the order, Oscar. Got it? Got it. Call I don't even it. know if people are going to like this crab, but we'll see. Good luck. All right, buddy, thank you. Is this the troll crab? The rest is in the storage, OK? OK. All right, thank you. Out of the entire American fleet, I'm the only one that's catching red king crab. Nice big king crab. I'm happy I got all those big king crab. Looking forward to getting them to Lenny. I haven't talked to Sig. It'd be crazy for him not to accept this deal. Now, one of my first memories partaking in the fishery was on the foremost. I was 12, and I clearly remember my father explaining to my mother that he didn't bait me. In other words, don't blame me, blame him. The kid wants to go. I can't stop it. And uh, at the end of the day, I think internally that's what he wanted anyway. And I think he was proud that I wanted to be like him. And I still do. I don't know what the future brings. What I do know is that, uh, you know, we're not going to stop trying. And that's what he would do. You know, right now, our million dollar goal has been tested every day. We're just going to aim for king crab, and we just got to keep pushing forward. Hey, you guys, huddle up. Yep. OK, this is tricky bottom. It's real tricky bottom. I want to try to hit 35 fathoms but it's all over the place, okay? okay? So you need to be on your game. When I sound off, no excuses. Pot goes over the side, got it? Roger. Okay. All right. Unlike the Bering Sea, uh, the coastline here is checkerboarded with ridges. When you get higher up on these ridges, very hard bottom, and uh, you'll come up blank. 
So it seems like you're threading a needle uh, every time you're fishing these ridges around this coast. One part ready to go! All right, let it go. Roger, going over. There's some crap. Woo! OK, first one, Mark. No, oh, that's 33. It's not where I wanted it. Next pot. This is Oscar's boat. It's not a crab boat. You know, they got them stacked back in the stern there, so they got to use a crane every time to bring it in. It's not very efficient. So we can't use a lot of speed. It's just crawling through, trying to get him in there. Hurry up! It's coming! All right, there's 30. Four, thirty-five. OK, set it. All right, going over. Thirty-six. Set it. Set it. It's going. I'm already in 37. That's twice they can't get on the mark because they're not getting them over the side. Taking a long time. Sig's trying to set these right at 35 fathoms, and that 35 fathom mark kind of snakes along here. But this is taking a little bit longer with the setup. They're just not getting the pots over the side. If they set it when they're told, you'd hit the 35. It's just up and down bottom. That's the problem. Clark, yeah. I want you to run the hydros. I'm going to leave the door open. When I say set it, you set it, OK? Roger. On my mark. Set it! Going over! Got two bags stuck in the prop right now. It's not coming out. We try to get it out with the throwing hook. This is up. Okay, now, Oscar. I stood on him by him. Turn the other way. Leave that there. I go on this side. We go. We're gonna have to keel haul it. Take a line, put a weight on it, throw it over the bow, work it back, and then uh, bring it back up in the block. See if we can get the, get the line up that way. But you know, there's current here. You're right on the beach. So it's going to be tricky to do. I don't think they've ever done it on this boat, but we can give it a try. Right now, it's all hands on deck. Here you go. Drop it down. OK. Then you guys work it back together. So hopefully Oscar will keep the boat in position so we can deal with this current, because that's the problem. Just keep it there. You don't have to go all the way back. You can bring that one up here. OK, take this up a little bit. Clark's coming around. We're going to tie this off, and then he's going to pull. OK. OK, put it in the block. 
Easy. I don't think we got it. No, we didn't get it. There's just too many pots on one tangle. We're gonna have to just cut it and go into town because he wants a diver to look at it instead of trying to haul it out of the wheel. He could damage it further. These guys are in the channel here. They're gonna tow us in, evidently. This is a huge hit for us right now. We, we don't have time for this. We were hoping to pull all these pots today and get some king crab on board. We only have a few days left, and now here we are. We're getting towed in. This is one of those things that could possibly be a season ender. It's humiliating, but that's fishing. That's just part of the job. Great. I first set on this boat, haul it blank. I'm hoping it's just because there's so much gear around. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. It's another blank, George! Blank! All right, stack it. You stack them all and move. And I'm not exactly sure even where it goes. They got problem 35s. Uh, we didn't get any, so we are second them up. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Not so good. Lots of gear out here, lots of boats. And it just, no crab left. I'm actually about four and a half nautical miles from you. So what's the plan? What do you want me to do? If you could find some 35 fathom ridges away from all the gear, I think that would be the ticket. All right, well, I'll let you know what I find. Now that Norway opened up their fishing all over now, we got to get away from the crowd and find a new home. We've already done SIG set. This is my set in the shallows. I'm hoping to make this work. Hopefully, Jake is knowing what he's doing. You know, we need a lot of crowd. Yarla. Hello, guys. Hey, Jake. Uh, where's she going? I don't know. I haven't seen him yet. Because you know. he's putting on a skier, you know, or something. <laughs> if I did this to him, oh, man, I think of all the times growing up, if I was a minute late. Where's the kid? One more minute, I would have not turned around. That kid just about missed the boat. Almost lost my job. You got to understand that Sig is a father figure, and he's played a big role in my life. So this thing has to work, man. All right, let's get him over. Six the boss, no matter if he's on deck or not. But he's always the boss. Come on, set this. All right. Come on. All right, here we go. 
Well, Jake's gonna get him in the water. Hopefully, we get lucky. You know, when the clock's ticking, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the job done. We are a team together. And sometimes, leaving the wheelhouse and getting your hands dirty with the guys is the push that they might need to get to the finish line. Well, we're about 140 miles up north by uh, Pionaina, which is a bare island. So we're quite close to the island. Uh, the depths look good here. Oh, and we're hoping we get lucky. When you're a captain going on deck, I mean, it means something. It means that you're uh, engaged with the crew. You're a part of this uh, family, you know, this dynamic, the team. You got to be adding that one. No, we got two AD and a board We don't have to be adding this, that, this one. And uh, once in a while, it's good to support your guys and show a little enthusiasm. Here's the bottom. Okay. It's a little shallower. Jake said it's going to be a little shallower than what we had. Can't get this My father would come out on deck once in a while, but normally he'd just tell me what I'm doing wrong. I remember one season we were fishing out west in Adak for uh, king crab, and he didn't like the knots that were being used. It was taking too much time. He came out on deck and just whipped one out as fast as you could imagine, and that was the new knot that we use today. So if he saw something that he didn't like, he'd let you know. Ah, uh, that's not good. That's not good. This is our last final push that we have. I got to get home because of my American businesses. Sig's got to get home. Good. Uh, ah. Oh, you lifted your foot. You lifted your foot. Got to keep your feet down. Yeah. All right, pick that. I was trying to get out of the way. The pot was, you know, the pot was like, uh, it was still tied on top. So when he picked it up to pull it out, it swung around. It was coming at me. You want me to get you some ice? Yeah, you got ice? Get some ice, yeah. That's, you, you can't, that's not too tight. I'm afraid to make no. it tight. I just got to keep ice on it for a while. I shouldn't have let you go out there. But nothing good comes easy, does it? No, dude. No. I swear to God, this boat is cursed. <laughs> it's not too tight, right? No. No, go get the gear in the water. I'm glad I went to Nesna. You're right. It's Chris and the Blacks. My great grandfather, who's the first family member that went to fish in the Bering Sea. Chris and the Black is my great grandfather. Chris and Martin Hetman. He immigrated from Norway to the United States in 1906. He created a successful life there for his family. So when my great grandfather, Chris in the Black, died, he sent this ring back to Nesna, to the old family plot that he had purchased for his father until my cousin Celia gave it to me. And see in there? See Dutch Harbor. 
He made a ring out of it and wore it till the day he died, and he died outside the pass. No kidding. Yeah. They had a funeral for him at his house before he left because they told him, if you go, you're going to die. And you didn't know any of this till now? Didn't know any of it. You must feel pretty good, huh? Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Got to learn a lot about myself, family. I also figured out, which I kind of knew, my dad had spent a lot of time over here, so I think I'm going to spread his ashes here in the Barren Sea. I think that's a great idea. I think he'd be real proud of you. Well, you know, knowing and honoring where you come from was always a big deal to my father, so. And the same goes for me. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, me too. I always figured my father would want to be buried in Carmway. You know, I thought we would have to ship his body back. He's in Seattle? No, he is in Seattle. That's what he wanted. That's what we do, right? Try to do right by our parents? You're not kidding. I know my dad would love nothing more than to be on a Norwegian boat and have Norwegian fishermen spreading his ashes. That is just powerful in itself for him and me and my family back home. Here goes nothing. My dad went missing and ripped my family apart. Ripped me apart. A lot of anger and frustration and it's something that will never go away. I mean, nobody ever thinks that their dad's gonna go missing in the woods probably murdered over 600 bucks, but nobody ever thinks that they're gonna only have part of a skull and a femur to cremate. Nobody thinks that's gonna happen to them. But when I was home, I could never be the son to my father I always wanted to be. And then when I was ready to grow up, he was gone. That's all that's left. All right, Dad, we're fishing in Norway. I think there should be something in there, but I'm about to find out right now. Ready, Yarla? Yeah, go ahead, Jake. Hey! Oh, there's a big one. Okay, Jake, we got 21. 27, 45, Jake, 45. Now grabbing, baby. Hey! Hey! I love you. Woo-hoo! Sig's gonna love me now. So we did it. Hey, Yarla, we did it, dude. That's 7,097 crab. All right, that's it. Yeah, that was it, that. Yeah! We did it, guys! Thank you! Yeah! Oh, my god, yeah! what a relief. I really didn't think it was going to happen. Just kept casting it again, casting it again, casting it again. That's probably the best fishing trip I ever had with my dad. We've been through a lot to get to this point right here. And it feels good. I think we got pretty much everything you can get out of that spot. Strategy was solid. And bottom line is, it was crab in the pots. And the team effort paid off. And uh, we just filled that order, so I couldn't ask for more. Look at all that crab.
different than how it does in Alaska, but at least we're getting it there on time. That's what matters. You know, normally at this point, we're taking our crab live out of our tanks, and now it's in a container. That right there, that's our future. I think it's time. I love you, Dad. I tried, I, I tried so hard to be a good son. I'm happy you got to fish with me one last time. In the back of my mind, I knew that I didn't come to Norway to fish king crab. I came to find my family and to put you to rest at your home where you always wanted to be. My dad loved Norway more than he, I think he loved his own country. And uh, for him to get to be spread out over the Barents Sea, I think, well, I already know, uh, he'd, really he'd really like this. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Whoo. Oh, man. I don't want to let go. Till Valhall. I've got family in Norway. So he wants me to reach out to see if I can find where any crab are. We have big orders now to fill. I, I, I need to be focused on fishing first, but, you know, honestly, I don't give a This is somewhat a personal mission, too. Basically, I didn't realize how powerful what my dad had taught me about my heritage was. I didn't realize how much emotionally it was going to impact me. Let's see what I find out. Is that you, Jake? How are you? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know the information I got. I talked to a family friend named Yar, and he sent me over to my cousin, Celia, and she might know something. I mean, I know I asked you to go find some intel from your family, but it's starting to take a little longer than I figured. I'm already down this road. I'm, I'm going to finish what I started here. OK, well, do your thing. I understand what you're doing, but just try not to take too long, all right? We got to keep these pots fishing, so. All right, Sig, I'll uh, see you later. OK, bye. I imagine when Jake's father passed away, uh, it left a hole, right? I respect the fact that he wants to come to Norway. I respect the fact that he uh, wants to learn more about his family and his roots. That's one of the things that uh, we have in common. It's hard to chart a course forward if you don't know where you've been. Oh, there it is. It must be silly right there. Thanks for meeting me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad that Yarovi gave me your number. Yeah. So I know my dad visited here when I was a lot younger. Yeah, I met him. Really? Yeah, I really liked him. Was he happy when he, he was here? He was really happy, like he was satisfied. My Norwegian family saw my dad at the last moments he was doing his best. And I want to know what that was like. I also want to know what, where I come from. I mean, it's a long shot, but I was hoping maybe you might have some information on my family fishing history around here. They used to live here. This is the house where your great-grandfather, Christian, grew up. No way. Yeah. 
He lived here with eight sisters and brothers and his father and mother, Johannes and Johanna. This is really cool. This Holy is the cow, house. Is the house. There you can see Christian. He's the big fella there. He's huge. And, yeah, he's the oldest. And there's your great, great grandfather with the horse. Let me see. Johannes. Oh my God, Johannes looks just like my dad. Yeah. Look, we have prepared a dinner for you. We have gathered all the family, so we really want to meet you. I'll yeah. drive. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be on a personal uh, tour, <laughs> but I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah. How many of you guys met my dad? He stayed with Grandma Karen, right? Yeah, and my uncle Schalk. Oh, so you knew him? Yeah, uh, we uh, took a trip to Velsvold to show him uh, where your grandfather came from. At breakfast, we always had bread, um, brown cheese, and smoked salmon. Oh, no, together? Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Just like in Anderson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is really, I'm gonna say it as American, this goulash is good, man. <laughs> My dad loved to talk about two things, family and fishing. And to get to hear my Uncle Shog and Ruin talk about decades of cod, fishing, and herring, and he would be on cloud nine. Okay, so I want to show you something, Jake. Um, I have a copy of this diary from Johannes, your great-great-grandfather. That's Christens? Yeah, and this is from 1904. And he was talking about what kind of weather it was, but also talking about going to Lofoten and do some fishing. What were they fishing for? It was herring. You gotta be kidding me. Can I see it? Yes, of course. Oh my gosh, like this is amazing. So with the Gulf Stream around here, what it brings with the cold and warm water is a lot of nutrients that fish feed off, herring, cod. So where there's herring, there's always gonna be, guess what? Crab. Crab. <laughs> the notes from my great-great-grandfather's diary are over 100 years old. And they're the same exact information that we use today. So, so. Hey, Sig, it's Jake. How are you doing? Ah, I'm not jumping up and down here, that's for sure. Two crabs. We sit on the fjord side of the break, but we're coming up pretty poor here. Hey, can you pull up uh, the charts on the Lafoten Islands? I'm checking it out right now. What's your point? My great-great-grandfather, Johannes, used to tackle herring through there. Gulf Stream would run up and leave nutrients, cold pockets of water on the north side. Then you know where there's herring, there's going to be crab. I see what you're saying. We can set in those ridges and give it a try. Yeah, try that for me. All right. I'll let you know how things go. OK, cool. Well, maybe he's right, you know. We're going to have to just change course and just set these things in those depressions. Magni wanted me to try in the Gulf Stream. It's more nutrient-dense waters. Um, that didn't pan out. But if I can get into the colder, deep gullies and find that fine line where those warm waters meet those cold pools, I think that's where you'll find the crab. I'd like to thank you guys for making this all happen. You're welcome. I wish I just had more time, but I don't. Okay. I say two some talk. Thank you so much. Is that what you say? Oh, Thank you. Come here. I just, I just got here. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you too. <laughs> this. What's that? This is the ring we found from Kristen. No way. Yeah, you should have it. 
Thank you so much. When King Crab in Alaska closed this fall, we were all on our heels. But that trip to Norway really opened my eyes. There is opportunity to build on our business. Being Norwegian, uh, part of our family's legacy is where dad started. I mean, if I can keep that going and build something for the next generation, I'm in. You know, when my father came to this country, um, he raised my brothers and I fishing. When my friends were playing Little League, we were in the shipyard working on the foremost. You know, we were rigging gear in our garage, helping the family business. So his example to me was uh, uh, something that uh, I think molded me into what I am today, good or bad. When dad bought the Northwestern, she was just over a million dollars to purchase, and they fished for that million dollars the first year. That's my goal. We'll see if I can live up to the old man's standard. So the guys stayed up all night, managed to get the pots on board, got the bait on board. We did the fuel in advance. You know, my dad brought me to Norway to handle basically the business end of this operation. I'm really hoping that it's gonna pay off in the end. I feel like it's a new beginning. This is a new start for us, and that's what makes it exciting. Are you leaving? Yeah. All right, be safe. I will. Be safe. Okay. It's very suspenseful. I feel like, let's go do it anyway. You know, you throw caution to the wind and go. You got it? OK. All right, you love you. I love you. We throw the lines. Right, it's about time. Let's get the out of here. Let's get this show on the road. Manny's staying on shore this time. We got Sailor here now, but she's got stuff to do. I gotta be out here. What the hell now? What now? Give me a a lot of smoke. Get down there and figure it out! Ugh. Mark, you're gonna have to set up a relay. Hey, set up a relay! Let me know what's going on! We got a pie truck. There's fire on the bomb thruster. Get the bow thruster. We got to go back to the dock now. Thruster? I got to use it to get back to the dock. <coughs> get a spring line. <coughs> Hurry up. I got to get down there now. It's out. Tell them it's out. Fire's out. It's out? Fire's out. See, we're all secure to the dock. We got the bow and the spring. Fire's out. We're gonna have to wait for a second to go down there. It's pretty hot and smoky. Somebody get up here! You think it's the bow thruster? I'm not sure exactly what caught fire, but it's too hot. Though. I know it's a thruster. I had nothing on the front end. Are they both on the same pump? No. No, it's got its own engine. Well, this one's dead. Get Yarla, get down there when it cools off and figure it out, OK? Roger. Got it. You leave the dock, and all systems are go. My assumption is that it's, it's the pump. It's always the pump that burns up. Thank God it happened near the dock. I have no idea what it's going to take to get this thing fixed. And um, we got to go. We got to go now. We got to think outside the box, Clark and then make it work. Maybe riding the edges of those closure areas might be the best. You know, ride just on the line. Yarlow was saying closer to 150 fathoms. Well, what does Yarla know? <laughs> it would have been nice to get inside there. We can't get in. What are you going to do? There's lots of places to try. Any word on the boat? They're working on it, you know? And that's all I know. Hopefully, we'll hear something soon. Fire's a fire, but they know we're in a time crunch. What do you got there? These are the boxes that Grandma wanted me to look through. So she wants all this in Seattle? Yeah. All right. Isn't this Grandpa? Yeah, that's in the military. Where'd you find these? Up in the attic. God, I haven't seen that in 40 years. 
that's right behind the, the house here. It used to look like that, and that's we're fishing crab. It was right off the plane. What about this stuff? Did you make this, or? This was a school project. Career in commercial fishing. C plus. C plus. <laughs> yeah. 61778. How old were you in 78? It was 12, 11, 12. Mrs. <laughs> what a. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord, these are. This is from uh, my dad to my mom. Mama, mom, mother, how are you? Alaska is beautiful and bad place, hard place, hard, tough place, probably. It's, it's different, but it feels like home. It's probably because it's cold. <laughs> My mom and dad actually met in grade school, so they knew each other all their lives. In 1955, uh, my dad was making pretty good money in the North Sea. But in 1957, the herring industry crashed. Looking for a new way of life, a better life, um, you know, he came to the US. You know, he took a shot. Uh, let me see. Fish for crab, we fish for crab. That's uh, king crab. The price is low, but they are plentiful, plenty of them. But I think uh, make money, make a living uh, with hard work. Uh, it's been hard, but thinking of uh, home uh, gets me through. Love you, uh, write you soon. Well, I want you guys to be successful here. And I want you to feel like you're a part of it. And I really feel like you can get a future out of this. And you got to try, take that risk with me. You know, and I've already had in the back of my mind, I want you guys to be partners. I wasn't going to say it now, but I really want you to be a partner. I want you to care as much as I do. Do you understand? Deal? Yeah. Deal? Deal. Deal. Okay? You know, four decades ago, nobody ever heard of bear dye. It just wasn't fished. And then people got a taste. It only took one year to create demand, and there was a million pounds harvested. We could do the same here with troll crab. It all comes down to this one dinner. You know, uh, I could use a vodka. Everything that's done here now is what's going to tell me how the future is going to look. If they like it, then you create a demand. That's what it's all about. Here is your present, sir. Thank you. You are very welcome. This is delicious, but you know what matters is what the rest of the people think. How do we do? We are sold out. As long as it's there, we're going to keep selling. Then I'm going to see if we can find some more. Thank I'll you. see you soon. Yes. I think we're going to catch some crap today. Sig just left me with this boat. The idea is that we're dividing and conquering. He's attacking troll crab and I'm looking for red king crab. I set these pots in the canyons, and normally in Alaska, you would not find crab here, but it must be all the variables are different here, and I'm hoping to dial them in.
They king crab? King crab, look at this! Yeah! Oh. Whoa. Wow! Those are big! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Got me, Lenny? Yeah, hey, Jake. How's it going? Good. I haven't heard from you for a while. Lenny Herzog is the co-owner of the Saga and my business partner. King Crab shut down, which means there's opportunity to move crab from here into the States. 20 to $30 a pound. If I can find the crab, Lenny can find the buyer. Hey, I'm sending you a picture right now of what we're getting. They're huge. This is a 10 pound male. Very clean, very white. That'll feed three families. Yeah, the crab look beautiful. The buyers are interested. We'd like you to send over a small batch of some of the best crab to, to look at. Um, I, I have to talk to Sig, but I don't, I don't plan on any resistance. He's fishing troll crab. I don't think there'll be any option but to sell to your buyers. Talk to Sig and see if you guys are in, and then maybe try to send over 5,000 pounds to get started. Okay. The, the large crab always fetch you know, a really good price. Get back to me as soon as you can because this timing's important. Right now, there's no crab, but that could change. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a call again tomorrow and uh, let you know how it works out. Later, Lenny. 5,000 pounds of crab, $20 per pound, is $100,000. 5,000 pounds of crab at $30 is $150,000. The price is through the roof. Bruno! I can't imagine Sig would not be into making lots of money. That's so much money, he, ha he has to agree with me. Uh, you'd be stupid not to. We're gonna need a lot more information. And I think if we can find the right people to help us, we can start moving forward. You know, the restaurant sold 450 pounds of crab in, in a few hours. And now a dozen more want in. This thing's starting to take off. So Jon, he passed on. Bjarni, he's passed on. But here, Git is alive. That's my uncle Git. Tom is in here. Maybe they would have some information for us, you know? And then in the meantime, uh, we've got to hook up with Jake as well. He should be in pretty quick with that trip. And we'll get something done, all right? Okay. That's the plan. All right, here comes the last pot. Yala, we're headed in to deliver, so make sure we get that circulating tank prepped so it can get off as soon as possible when we hit the dock. Watch it up. Hey, Sig. You got me? You hear me? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got some big news on troll, OK? We did get about a dozen orders or better, so word's getting around like wildfire. I got some good news, too. I, I talked to Lenny. He's got some buyers for crab. Hey, 
that's not going to work right now. We're cutting out the middle. Man, we've got a lot of things going on here. I'm going to stick to one game plan. Okay, we got to get going here. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm out. The business is here in Norway. The red crab Jake's catching. I'm not selling that to make some middleman richer. We have to find a large quantity of troll crab, and we need to find where they're living. So far, we haven't seen anything schooled. But if you can find out kind of how they migrate, what their habits are, that's what we need to do. I'd like to go much farther offshore now that we've got our hands on some larger pots, Alaska-style pots, I want to take advantage of it. I'd like to do some big fishing and go deep and farther out. Is that uh, something we can do? <laughs> and if we could set on the perimeter outside, maybe just around the four-mile line or even farther. But my boat is not built for that kind of rough weather that could be out there. So this boat usually go fishing for cod, herring, crab in the fjords. So we are not built for the offshore fishing. Things can happen, can go wrong. Yeah, yeah, I understand your concerns. It just seems to me like uh, going out, going deeper, go bigger. That's, that's just how I think. We could try, but I promise you nothing. We've been steaming for a while now. Uh, instead of fishing in the fjords right now, we're gonna try to go offshore, get a little deeper. Probably gonna be a struggle for this boat. There's not much room on deck. I don't know if these guys have fished out in the deep yet. Sig thinks the troll crab are deeper out here offshore. So, I mean, but we gotta try. Are we getting right. close? I'm starting to feel sick. We're, this boat's got a different roll. I know, it's heavy. Yeah. Can you get the guys ready, Clark? Yeah. You know, I'm looking for a school, if it's possible. I haven't found that yet. And I know it's risky. I know we're burning more fuel and time, but we got the gear, we got the right pots, got the right crew. It's untouched. Nobody's been fishing out here. So it just makes sense to me to go try. Tick kind of elevated the stakes of the game here, you know, by going out this far and in bigger seas like this. I want to set these spots right here in the deep. Woo! Houston, we have a problem. Too much movement for this. Is it? This crane is not made for this. This crane is. The tide's running up against it here. Let me get her to turn around. See if we can find a better direction to get these in the water. The guys are having a hard time back there. The crane's not cooperating. So we got to try it. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Set it. Go it over. Okay, when you're setting up against it, you got a lot more movement on the boat. It's still a little rolly, but if you stay with it, hopefully it'll stabilize the boat enough to get these pots in the rack. Let's see how this is. This point, I think, is that desperate to get the troll crab that he would do anything. Worst case, one guy can get the pot in the head, that guy is really good. I'm not comfortable. You guys ready? Ready. OK, let her go when you're ready. All right. Going prop. The crane? We've got no hydraulics at all. We blew the main hydraulic hole. I need a new hose, the big one in the workshop and branches. Fast! It's a hydro leak! Is it hydros? 
I hope these guys can get this thing fixed quick. I don't want to be out here like this. Your hydraulics are everything. You know, they run everything. Your crane, your hydraulics on deck, everything we need to fish. On the Bergeson, they're used to running small conical pots, not these giant Alaska king crab pots. It's not made for that. I got it. I got it. Test them out. Try the crane. Come on, fellas. I can't do this. It's too much for you, Oscar? Tell you what, we'll go in a little closer, find some deep real estate as far in as we can, and maybe the weather will cooperate there. Is that all right? Works for me. OK. Just going to have to go in a little closer, a little bit shallower. That's all the guy can do right now. The cranes on this boat just aren't made to hold an 800-pound pot when the boat's rolling. This is not an Alaska crab boat. Well, if we came in a little bit shallower, and we were going to drop off this pot, just let's hope it's a little bit safer up here. It never fails, man. There's always something. A boat's a boat. They break down. It's just the way it is. Don't matter what country you're in, a boat's going to break down. Going over. Landing on a school crab gives me two things. The information I need to be confident about how much I can sell and the first shipment so we can start moving product right away. It's going to take about 10 minutes for each pot to come up. With all that depth, it takes a lot longer to haul the gear. Incoming. Incoming troll crowd. We just need to see something. Come on, come on, come on. No kidding. <laughs> you got crab? Got crab. <laughs> crab coming. Yeah, buddy. Got him. That's what we want to see right there. I'll be darned. That's the sign of life I was looking for. Program! Woo! We have crab! Woo! Get it on board. I want to get out of here. That's what we needed. 